You never know who you're going to run into <laughs> at the Rochester Jazz Festival. Case in point, Chelsea Barrett. Chelsea, welcome to Rochester. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Have you played here before? I haven't. This is my first time in Rochester. So we interviewed many, many years ago at the Winter Jazz Festival, like around 2010, 2011. So I remember that year. Yep. Yeah, once upon a time. So lots of stuff have happened, has happened, obviously. But for you, how have you been able to keep yourself somewhat sane in the world that we live in? Because, I mean, there's changes that you've been through personally as well as what the world has been dealing with. But how do you keep swinging? How do I keep swinging? I mean, this is a big theme for me right now. We've watched so many people burn out in this period of time going through the pandemic. And I've been a big advocate of like taking care of your mental health. And honestly, 2020 for me, like my biggest focus was going to therapy and really taking care of my mental because my mentor, Maurice Brown, told me very early on in my career, he said, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So to me, it was like, how are we gonna navigate the whole world shutting down and everybody going through all this insecurity? We now have to take care of our health and wellness more than anything. So, you know, health is wealth and people have to take care of their mental health too. So I think that's really important. And other than that, you know, things kind of came back. We did some live streaming and stuff during the pandemic. I was working on studio stuff with Emmeline and Maurice and Brandy Younger and doing other stuff. But other than that, you know, we just had to get through it. We had to get through it and reprioritize things in life. And the work came back. So we had to be ready for that. We had to be in shape. <laughs> Talking to Chelsea Barras, talk about doing the work because that's really, especially with mental wellness and a musician and artist, you're giving so much yourself out. How do you like find a space to, to recharge and re-energize? Because there's so many demands on your time and energy. Where do you find the time to say, you know what, I need to say no. You have to take the time. And I love that you said it, find the time to say no, because like when you're doing work in therapy, you learn about setting boundaries with people. And that's like a big theme with people. And I think like you get into this career and you get so much positive feedback for doing what you do. And you have to develop a relationship with saying no. And you have to reevaluate your relationship with what you say yes to. So it is important to say no. You cannot say yes to everything. You do have to take that time to recharge and yeah, I am talking about this to younger musicians all the time. You just got to do it. There's no way of like, how do I do it? You just do it. You do it and you rest and you recharge and you eat healthy and you get some good sleep and you go back out there and you kill it. Something a lot of people struggle with because they think they have to, if they, don't, if they say no once, they're not going to be asked again. So how do you find that balance? Because that's the biggest fear, especially if you're a young musician. You have to be so eager to be on point, on time, ready to go. But yet you're telling people it's okay to say no. There will be another chance. Well, I've been through certain things. So some people don't know this about me, but I've had several uh, bad like sports injuries and I've had to have surgery a few times. And that's a situation where there's no way around it. You have to automatically stop working. And in my case, a few times I had to be laid up in bed for like three months and I had to say no to things. And the first time that happened to me, I literally thought like, oh my God, everybody's going to forget I exist. Like, how am I going to get back to work? And I realized like, I just took myself way too seriously in that situation. Of course, the work was there when I came back. The work is always going to be there when you come back. If you take like your community and your relationships with people seriously, that's what really matters, you know? The work is going to be there. We have plenty of work. We almost have a weird professional shortage in New York of people who can show up and do that really? work consistently. Yeah, I mean, it's just like any other industry right now. You're seeing in the airline industry and other industries, they're saying people are out sick. People are still getting COVID and having to miss gigs. And we need, you need to have like a network of people who you can call if you have to say no to things. That means like, we have to have discussions about fair wages in work. We have to support more of people in our community and hand out work to them. So if you can say no to something, that means you can help somebody else make some money that night or in that situation. It's about building the community and, keep, and supporting the family. Exactly, exactly, so. Chelsea, last question for you. Tell me about growing up in Pittsburgh, because it means such a rich wellspring of so many legendary musicians. What was it like growing up in the 412? It was unbelievable. I went to Upper St. Clair High School. Shout out to Upper St. Clair because Benny Benack and I both went to the same high school. And we had the same band teacher, Frank Eisenreich. Maybe if he ever sees this, I love you, Frank. You were everything. And he told me when I was like 
14 years old or 13 years old or something like that to go out to the Crawford Grill. He was like, there's this young trumpet player who's in town. He's lighting up the scene. His name is Sean Jones. You need to go see him. So from the time I was that young in high school, I had somebody who was tapped into the scene and understood the working scene and uh, as like a professional musician and a teacher. And he sent us out there and got us plugged in. And from then I met like Roger Humphreys and Luz DeLute and Dwayne Dolphin and all these amazing musicians in Pittsburgh. I met Sean like the first time I ever went to the Hill District and went to the Crawford Grill, which was one of the most historic clubs in Pittsburgh, right? I saw Sean Jones playing with his quintet, I believe, and then they had a jam session at the Crawford Grill after that. And from then on, it was just like I was in that scene. I was going to James Street every Thursday night for Roger Humphrey's jam session. And then my first year when I went to school in Pittsburgh, actually two years, I went to school in Pittsburgh at a school called Slippery Rock, and every Tuesday night, Sean would be playing with his band at Dow's, and he would open up his last set for young musicians. And I feel like it was just one of the greatest experiences you could have as a young musician. It was a very intimate scene. There was a lot of love and support. I love everybody I came up with in Pittsburgh and who showed me support when I was coming up as a musician. And it's one of the things I'm the most proud of in my life. Chelsea Brass, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for taking jazz further. My pleasure. All right.